Hello, this is Tom, and this is Tom's Ready Rum Show. And boy, shortwave listing is in the toilet today. Just, I, I can't pick up anything. So, I went back over something I found a couple days ago uh, through one of the users' groups, I think, or I don't know. Somebody sent me the link. And I had never seen this before. And what this is, is a page on the internet and I'll put the link to the page down in the description um, under this video uh, that provides you real-time status of amateur radio satellites and weather satellites the NOAA weather satellites and it gives you a wealth of information okay the first thing you want to do is you want to go down here the bottom and you want to put in your location. Either you can put in your grid number, which is the amateur radio community, the amateur radio community, a long time ago set up a world map and mapped off grids throughout the world and assigned numbers. So, for instance. Most of Central Florida has one number, and that's EL870X, OX. And you need to put that in, or you can put in your Latin lawn if you know what that is, so that this website knows where you're located, because it's going to determine the arrival time and position of the satellites based on your location so if you can see up here this little house here that's my location in florida so once you do that then you can start looking at all these things it provides and it's showing you and they're color coded it's showing you um, all the amateur radio satellites that are orbiting the world the united states not the united states the world United States one, I am so cuckoo. Um, and you can select which ones you want to see. Right now I'm seeing all of them. And for instance, I can go select only the ones that have FM voice communications. Okay, so I'll select purple. There's a few of those, not many of those. And these are satellites that if you have an amateur radio license, a technician's license, it's all you need, you can transmit and receive on these satellites to other amateurs. So, for instance, if I had a satellite that was um, over here by my house, by, by my house, near my house, over here going overhead, I could transmit up to it, and then maybe somebody over here in Europe could hear it, or somebody up here in Canada might hear me. So you get long distance communication on VHF and UHF, which typically is line of sight communications. So uh, also you, the, the, the International Space Station has a amateur radio station on board. Some of the astronauts are amateur radio operators, licensed amateur operators, and they will talk to people on the ground, such as yourself. Many times what they do is an amateur operator will go to a school and set up a small station for the kids to communicate with the astronauts. Pretty cool. I Many years ago, I talked to one of the astronauts um, through this same method. Now, if you've if you've seen my videos quite a while back where I was outside testing some antennas, I probably showed you my satellite, my big satellite arrays that were that were and kind of inoperable like right now. <coughs> were used <coughs> excuse me, were used for communicating with these satellites. They were their beam antennas, so they have quite a bit of gain to your signal so that you can talk to these satellites that are way up in the air going overhead. <clears throat> you can actually 
talk to these satellites with a handheld portable transceiver. A little difficult, but it can be done. I've seen it done many times. I've heard them on my HT. I've never been able to communicate. And I also have an antenna like the one pictured here, except mine has um, radios going both directions, one for two meters and one for 70 centimeters. Those are the two frequencies most of these satellites work on. Back when I was doing it, that's the two frequencies I was using. Before that, they had uh, a band in the 10 meter band that you could talk to satellites. Nope. There, there isn't any satellites that I know of that you could talk to on 10 meters. Um, oh gosh, I'm going too long again. Let me just quickly go over this and I, I need to shut this down so that my screen capture program won't crash again. So uh, there's many things you can do on this. You can select the satellites you just, you just want to see, you want to see. You can show all satellites. Ooh, there's a few of them up there. And uh, you can zoom in and out using these zoom, zoom buttons. It gives you information about a particular satellite. Here, right now it's tracking AO71. It says the azimuth is 46 degrees and the elevation is 1. It's just coming over the, the horizon for me. I can click on AO71. Uh, I can click on in range and there's AO71 buried in there someplace. And uh, it gives you this table, which is I think for 24 hours. And it will give you the expected maximum elevation and at what time and uh, the azimuth of each of the satellites that are, this is like a prediction of what's coming up that you might be able to hear or communicate on. Okay, I'm gonna shut this down because I'm running out of time. I may have already run out of time. If you want more information, just let me know, let me know and I'll go over it in more detail. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.